Okay. <clears throat> okay, all right. So hello, dears. Good day. Okay, good afternoon. Good day. Yes, hello. So um, again, we are now here for another pre-recorded lecture on again your clinical bacteriology class. Um, yes, and for today, what we're going to discuss is the biochemical testing part three. Yes, last part na sa biochem. Um, medyo I know basing TMI gap ko no uh, from the previous biochem na atong na na discuss especially sa enterobacteriaceae and then uh, other biochems no I, I feel like a pinaka TMI uh, TMI jud ato is the enterobacteriaceae but again uh, don't don't be sad <laughs> uh, despair not because again uh, this is the last part na of biochemical testing again malapit na matapos ang sem pero as in pa jud katong asa bakte may gaso bay bay pa jud ang kailangang i-discuss but Laban lang yapunta no. All right. So again, so for the first part of the biochemical testing part three, we'll discuss the biochemical tests for the non-enteric gastrointestinal pathogens. Now, what do you say or what do you mean when you say non-enteric uh, gastrointestinal pathogens? It means these are not part of the normal microbiota sa imuhang gastrointestinal system na mga kagaw, but they cause um, gastrointestinal mga diseases, gastroenteritis, diarrhea, and ana. Okay. All right, so that's what we're gonna discuss. And diba, if you can see mga shellfish atong discuss, yes, ang sarap sarap. So ngano dagay na siya. All right, okay, so ano kay siya no, very tropical, very, yes, mga by the sea, mga inana, no, seafood, yes, naman. All right, so again, this is the biochemical testing for your non enteric gastrointestinal pathogens. Okay, as usual, we'll discuss first an introduction for these organisms. And uh, kinsa ni mga species or mga genus na organisms na ani na group. Uh, this uh, group is composed of the bacteria with a genus or with a genera uh, Vibrio, Aeromonas, Helicobacter, and Campylobacter. So, sila ni opat ang mga non enteric gastrointestinal pathogens. Again, when you say non enteric, they are not part of the normal uh, microbiota, sa imuhang intestines or sa imuhang gastrointestinal system, but they cause gastroenteritis or mga gastrointestinal diseases. Okay? Alright. So again, kisa ni sila, Vibrio, oh, very common na, very popular, Aeromonas, si Campi, and si Helicobacter. Okay, so we'll start first with some description. Uh, we'll start first again with Vibrio species. Now, what are Vibrio species? They are found in a variety of aquatic environments from plankton fish and shellfish. Ayan, kaya ang atong background kay kani, mga tahong. Yes, tahong ni Carl. <laughs> and mga oysters, mga inana. Because again, usually makuha na ito sila. Makuha na ang vibrio from these um, sources. Okay, alright. Ayan, so again, variety of aquatic environments. They are curved and comma-shaped. So curved, comma-shaped. Mga parang, parang ganito. Yes, hindi ako magaling mag-draw eh. <laughs> My God, okay, alright. So again, curved or comma shape. Alright? Gram neg bacilli. Okay, alright. Next, you have, they all ferment glucose. Pares lang sa enterobacteriaceae, di ba? The enterobacteriaceae, uh, enterobacteriaceae all ferment glucose. Ayan. And also, all, all species of Vibrio ferment glucose. They are all uh, oxidase positive. Ah, joke. They are non lactose fermenters except for Vibrio vulnificus. Okay, alright. Ayan. So, except for Vibrio vulnificus. And they are all oxidase positive and can reduce nitrate to nitrite except kinsa Vibrio mechnikovii. I, I'm not sure on sa pronounce it, but I pronounce it as mechnikovii. Okay, alright. Ayan. So, and we have also the hallmark of cholera, diba? Vibrio cholerae. Uh, causative agent of your cholera. The hallmark of cholera is rice watery stools. Ayan. So please take note, please take note. Very characteristic. Uh, characteristic yun of cholera, rice watery stools. Ayan. Please take note. Don't forget. Okay. All right. Ayan. So here's an example, of course. This is your vibrio. As you can see, it's motel again with polar, right? Polar, uh, uh, polar flagella. Monotrichos. Okay. And what's itong characteristic ganin niya na motility? Shooting star, kapilan sig balik balik, di ba? Shooting star or rapid darting motility. Ayan, wag na mag isep okay? Shooting star, ra rapid darting motility, si Vibrio. Okay, Vibrio colliery. And here's an example of your rice watery stools. As you can see, di ba? Rice water, mura ka nang after ninyo mag, mag, um, mag kilis or ka nang mag clean sa, sa rice, di ba? Pag lungag, ka na siya na type of water na appearance. Okay, mo na siya ang ang appearance ay muhang stools in cholera. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is full of electrolytes, mga inana. Kaya intense mong pagkalibanga and all. Because again, of the toxins and all that ginaproduce sa Vibrio cholerae, 
Okay? So, muna siya inanang appearance, yeah. But again, rice watery stools, diba? Similar siya, if magsingin mo glungag, if, if ting glungag mo siya yung balay, sure naman, grabe naman ang mga... Yes, no, dapat... A char lang. Basta, if ting glungag mo siya yung balay, diba? If kanang after ninyo, og, like, limpyo sa rice, before ninyo butangan siya water, para ibutang na sa rice cooker, kaya ano yung appearance. So, rice watery stools, again, hallmark of cholera. Okay, alright. So, ayan, Vibrio SPP. So, these are, again, general characteristics ni Vibrio. Okay? Alright. Next, we go now to Aeromonas. Ayan. So, for Aeromonas, these are, again, oxidase positive, glucose fermenting na mga rods. They're all motile, single polar flagellum. And usually, they are responsible for uh, a wide uh, spectrum of diseases for cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals. Usually, mga amphibians, reptiles, and even mga humans. And sa humans, usually, again, still in the form of mga gastroenteritis, okay? And um, other forms of uh, gastrointestinal diseases, okay? Alright, and very uh, characteristic po niya is red leg, <coughs> red leg disease in amphibians, okay? Alright, red leg disease in amphibians. Now, kung say red man syndrome, Ayan. Kinsay nag-cause aning red man syndrome since nag-talk naman yung tag red leg disease in amphibians. Okay. So, kung red leg disease in amphibians, aeromonas. Pero kung red man syndrome, dili ni siya kaga o nag-cause aning ha. But, an antibiotic and that's caused by vancomycin. O, oh, ba Sa clean chem ni siya. <laughs> Alright. Supposed to be sa clean chem ni. But again, red man syndrome, lahi na siya sa red leg. Okay? Red leg disease, it's for aeromonas. Okay? And sa amphibians, makitan. But for red man syndrome, sa humans, it's not caused by a bacteria, but it's caused by a an, an antibiotic. And that's vancomycin. Okay. Alright. Lumalabas sa boards. Promise. Okay. Alright. Ayan. But again, for red leg disease, what we're going, uh, it's caused by <clears throat> aeromonas uh, species. Okay. And ayan, CIN, bullseye colonies. Remember, again, for bullseye colonies, it's usually characteristic of Yersinia enterocolitica. But again, pwede po siyang aeromonas. Now, sir, how do we identify the two? Alright. Now, what is the test that you should perform to identify if you have a bullseye colony on CIN? Unsaman. Of course, you perform oxidase. Ayan. So, how to differentiate uh, Y entero versus uh, aeromonas if pareha silang nakakinakita naka, eh, na boost eye colonies on your CIN so it could be aeromonas or your senior enterocolitica what should be what should we perform to di differentiate the two oxidase okay nga man nga mang oxidase because again recall that your senia is part of the enterobacteriaceae and unsa tong characteristics sa enterobacteriaceae all enterobacteriaceae are oxidase negative except for shigella uh, dysentery. Chak, chak to ba? Shigella dysentery ba ito? Basta. Except Shigella something. <clears throat> Ideally, basta. Sorry naman. Basta all oxidase negative. Muna siya. All oxidase negative. So therefore, your entero, uh, enterocolitica, your senior enterocolitica, it's negative and your aeromonas is positive. Ayan. So, if you have both eye colonies on CIN and if you want to differentiate if aeromonas ba siya or your senior enterocolitica, you perform oxidase test. And if negative siya, then of course, that's your senior enterocolitica. And if it's positive, it's aeromonas. Okay. Alright. Ayan. And uh, that's all for aeromonas. Okay. Now, we go now next to Campylobacter. Ayan. Okay. Okay. So, for Campylobacter, again, these are motile by a single polar flagellum. Once the characteristic motility, darting motility. Basta gani, darting ra, that's Campylobacter. Pero if rapid darting, that's Vibrio. Shooting star, rapid darting. Okay. And, uh, characteristic po niya, curved seagull winged. Okay. So, seagull winged. Ayan. In Anna. Curved seagull winged, faintly staining gram neg bacilli. And according to Mayhon, para for better visualization daw, uh, carbolfuxin. Ayan. Carbolfuxin. Ang atong primary stain sa acid fast. Carbolfuxin is recommended as the counter stain. And if you use safranin, katong atong normal gram staining procedure, uh, ato i-apply ang safranin for about 2 to 3 minutes. Okay. So, kung safranin gani, 2 to 3 minutes. So, prolong siya. Okay. Para, I think para mas makita. But again, ang preferred yun na counter stain is carbolfuxin. Okay. And please take note, Unsa yung appearance? Seagull wing. Inana, seagull wing. Okay? Alright. Pero bird. Ayan. And again, microaerophilic. When you say microaerophilic, only a small uh, concentration of oxygen. As you can see there, unsa yung um, iyahang uh, gas requirements, 5% of oxygen, 10% CO2 and 85% nitrogen. Ayan. Dumalabas din sa boards. Like, unsa yung characteristic or unsa yung 
um, gas requirements ay muhang mga micro aerophiles, okay? 5% rang O2, 10% CO2, and 85% ang nitrogen, okay? And grow optimally at 42 to 43 degrees Celsius. Karakteristik yun as a Campylobacter na mag-grow jod of 42 degrees Celsius, okay? Alright, so if naman ganit kayo makita na isolate, mag-grow well at 42 degrees Celsius, then that could be Campylobacter. But there are still other um, genus of bacteria na mga gramineg bacilli that also likes to grow um, at 42 degrees Celsius. We'll know later, okay? Alright, ayan. And lastly, infections play an important role in Guillain-Barre syndrome. Okay, so what is Guillain-Barre syndrome? Now, Guillain-Barre syndrome is an autoimmune disorder. So when you say autoimmune disorder, your own immune system is attacking your own cells. Now, what happens, mga good kay, when you have Campylobacter infections, of course, your body creates antibodies. Okay? But these antibodies cross-react. Okay? So instead na sa Campylobacter sila mo react, only, mo react po sila sa imuhang peripheral nerves. So, ilang i-damage imuhang peripheral nerves, appeal. Okay? So, katanong mga antibodies, again, ilang i-attack imong own peripheral nerves. That is why, uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome causes paralysis. Okay? I think it's uh, ascending. Ayan, ascending paralysis from the feet padulong sa taas. Okay? So, dapat siyang maagapan da yun. Kay Murag, if ever mo lapas na siya sa imuhang hips ba to, ang paralysis, kay Murag, it's it's very deadly na. Kaya maabot na siya diri. If maabot na siya sa lungs or something, magliso na breathe or like, di na breathe So, it could lead to your death. Okay? But again, ang point is, Guillain-Barre syndrome, autoimmune disorder. Okay? Autoimmune. Autoimmune. So, autoimmune meaning auto, self, immune. So, autoimmune. So, your own immune system is attacking your own healthy cells. Okay? Alright. Because why? Um, Campylobacter infections produce antibodies. Yes, of course. Quite similar with the rest of our infections, we produce antibodies against them. But ang ano ra sa Guillain-Barre is ang antibodies na supposed to be more react ra sa Campylobacter na bacteria na cause infection. It also cross reacts, so meaning more react po siya or iyang atakihon po imuhang peripheral nerves. Okay, peripheral nerves. That is why it can cause paralysis or ascending pataas ang paralysis from the foot up, from the foot sa imong legs padulong sa taas. Okay, so dapat siya maaga pa dayon and it's I think costly ang tambal ani. Yeah. It can cost mga thousands, I think. Alright, so please, please be very careful sa yung mga ipangkaon. Guys, okay? Alright, ayan. So, ayan, this is your red leg disease. As you can see, this is a frog and then red leg disease. And ayan, as you can see, diba, this is Campylobacter na ay seagull wing. Okay? Seagull wing appearance. Okay. And last of the genus na non-enterics, you have, of course, the Helicobacter. Uh, it's gram-negative, helical ang shape, quite the same with your Campylo. Okay? Alright. Um, motil by monopolar or multi-bipolar. So, um, different lang siya ang flagellum or flagella arrangement sa imuhang Campylobacter. Okay, pero siyang multi-bipolar. So, like, daghang flagella at one end or both ends. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Uh, they have strong urease activity, characteristic yun, very, very specific to Helicobacter species or to H. pylori yun, is your strong urease activity. Actually, it's uh, known as your rapid urease na siya, producer gapon. Okay? Rapid urease producer. Next, again, it's microaerophilic, but in comparison to your Campylobacter, as you can see, medyo uh, mas taas niya CO2, 5 to 12% CO2, and... Uh, Yes, of course, H. pylori, one of the species, or one of the most popular, if it's not the popular species good of uh, Helicobacter. H. pylori, again, it's associated with, what's the type of gastritis? Type B. Ayan, I think, lumala, ni as, na asan ni sa board sa una. Not on our time, but I think, previous board exam, what's the type of gastritis? Ang ginakos sa H. pylori, type B. And of course, very important put peptic ulcer and gastric carcinoma. Okay, so cancer of the stomach. Okay, all right. And, of course, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar or you're, um, yeah, you've known about this story. But your H. pylori was discovered by um, Sir, or Dr. Barry J. Marshall and Robin Warren. Yes. Buhi pa si Barry Marshall, guys. Actually, yes. I was really thinking na, like, he passed away. I think he passed away. Char. <laughs> Pero buhi pa siya. Okay, and si Robin Warren. Now, again, because again, Murag, for the previous years, stomach ulcers and mga peptic ulcers, gastric carcinoma and all, uh, they thought na... Uh, it was caused by stress and other factors. But si Barry Marshall, he was thinking that it's caused by um, bacterial infection. That is why he proved 
na it was indeed caused by um, a bacteria and that is H. pylori. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the story but it's really quite popular. Um, so yung ibuhat diba kay na ay broth judaw of H. pylori and then what he did was he drank the broth and then after mga I think days ba to siya or months nag, nag of course nag develop na siya peptic ulcer and gastric car- uh, pa- peptic ulcer uh, ulcer and then what he did is after ni inom na siya tamba so and naayo na siya so therefore na prove gyud ni iyahang uh, hypothesis diba na again your ulcers are caused by bacteria and then matambal siya ng antibiotics and because of that he won a nobel prize okay so unsa tong moral of the story manginom na tag broth sa kagaw charot lang joke na. okay all right but again yeah no, it's very interesting iyahang perseverance iya jung pag prove sa iyahang theory so very uh, good si Dr. Barry Marshall. Again, he discovered H. pylori and he proved that peptic ulcers are caused by bacteria and that it can be treated with antibiotics. Okay, all right. So again, this is a gram stain of your H. pylori. As you can see, quite the same na appearance put with your Campylobacter. Okay, but please take note yung flagella. Multi-bipolar. Okay, not only monopolar, but pwede po siyang multi-bipolar. So meaning daghan <clears throat> at, at bikas ends. Okay, all right. And this is uh, Dr. Barry Marshall, o diba? Atong, atong bestie. Charot lang. Again, buhi pa siya, guys. <laughs> Again, siya nakadiscover sa H. pylori. Okay. Alright, so we'll now go to the specific tests um, um, for, like, like, specific tests good to identify them. But most of the tests mang good to identify them are also tests na itong nagamit to identify the enterobacteriazi and other um, bacteria or other biochem na itong na-discuss sa first part like mga hyperate hydrolysis, so we don't need to discuss them further again. But nai ubang tests na kanang specific yun nila, so muna tong i-discuss ka ron. okay? And we'll start first with a vibriostatic test. As you can see, by the name itself, vibriostatic. Nasa nga lang, vibriostatic. So static, it inhibits vibrio, okay? Alright. So it um, separates the vibrios, which is susceptible, or which are susceptible, from the other oxidase, uh, positive glucose fermenters, which are resistant. So sir, on is this a susceptibility testing? Yes. Do we use an antibiotic? No, it's not an antibiotic, but a substance known as your 0129 vibriostatic agent or your 24-diamino-67 diisopropylpteridine. Okay, and we use discs. But it's a susceptibility testing. So we determine if the organism is susceptible to this organism or not. Okay? And ang susceptible ana is or again your vibrios. Okay. All right. So but again we don't use an antibiotic. Okay? All right. So still the same procedure for your antibiotic or antimicrobial susceptibility testing, diba? So we inoculate on MHA, we place the disc, again, atong i-push gamay ang disc on the center para mutapot yun siya, and then incubate at uh, normal incubation temperature, 30 or 37 ba? And then we observe for any zone of inhibition, which would indicate na susceptible siya, okay? And here's an example, of course, ang left is uh, resistant, no zone of inhibition, and the right is your susceptible. There is a zone of inhibition. Wala ragi specify kung unsa na size or anything basa na ay zone of inhibition. So again, vibrios ang susceptible, vibrios static, and your other um, species na oxidase positive glucose fermenters are uh, resistant. Okay? Alright. And another test, we also have what we call the string test. Uh, still the same, quite the same. It's used for the isolation of your vibrio species in comparison to the other um, genus uh, Plesiomonas and Aeromonas. Okay, and the reagent that we use is 0.5% sodium deoxycholate. Okay, now on say uh, principle. Now, your unknown organism, we emulsify in 0.5% sodium deoxycholate. And this 0.5% sodium deoxycholate, what it does is it promotes cell lysis. Okay, and uh, because of the cell lysis, it releases DNA, okay? And this DNA can be pulled into a string using an inoculating loop, okay? So here's an example of a picture, ayan, so that's the string test. So the, the string now is, again, the released DNA from the cell lysis caused by uh, 0.5% sodium deoxycholate. And again, ang positive nato ana is string formation. Ang positive are the vibrio species. And the negative, no string formation, your aeromonas and plesiomonas, Okay. Alright, so here's a summary of their biochemical results compa- comparing the three genus. Alright, so why do we compare the three? Because again, they're quite the same in terms of ilahang mga morphology, in terms of mga symptoms, mga diseases, right? But remember, Plesiobonas uh, shigiloides, it's now classified under Enterobacteria Z. So it's, um, it's not a non-enteric uh, GI pathogen. But again, we are still comparing the three because again, they're quite uh, the same in terms of morphology. Okay, so we'll start first again. Oxidase, they're all oxidase positive. Uh, for inositol fermentation, ang positive ra is Plesiomonas species. 
Manitol also ang positive ra is Vibrio. And of course, Vibrio static string test, kinsa ra mo positive ana or kinsa na ay mo rag effect ana. It's of course your Vibrio species na nasa ngalan, Vibrio static string test. The rest resistant or negative. And please take note also kaning growth in media with 6% NACL. Um, the only positive there again is Vibrio. Why? Because again, Vibrio uh, are halophilic. They love salt, high salt concentration. That is why they are um, positive sa mugro sila on 6% NACL. And the rest are not uh, positive. Okay? Alright. So, that's a test na pwede na ma perform. So, please take note ra mga specific yun na characteristic. The Vibrio static string test, kaning growth in 6% NACL, and kaning fermentation. Alright? Okay. Kanan yung like, kinsari positive or kanan special good ba na makain ka na siya na good. Ako ah. Huh? Sure. Okay. Alright. Next. Uh, we go now to the different species of some select species of Vibrio. Again, there are quite a lot of species. Ako rang ikuwa is katong medyo common. Okay, alright. So, of course, Vibrio cholery, Algiliticus, Mimicus, Vulnificus, Parahemolyticus, and Mechnikovii. Okay, now we'll start first with sucrose fermentation. Okay, now remember, unsa na itong culture media of choice for Vibrio isolation, you have your TCBS. Okay, recall, ang simining sa TCBS, thiosulfate, citrate, bile salts, sucrose, agar. Now, remember, wala pa na ako na-mention ang, or wala pa na ako na-discuss ang composition, ani Sa stool culture na, guys, don't worry, okay? But ang sugar na naaani is, of course, nasa pangalan, sucrose. Ayan. So, we look into the ability of the organism to ferment sucrose, okay? So, um, so kita naman mga sucrose fermenters. Vibrio cholery, algenuticus, and mechnikovii. And if you're a sucrose fermenter, imong colonies is color yellow, okay? Yellow colonies. And for non-fermenter, it's Green. Okay. Green colonies. Okay? Alright. So, therefore, si Vibrio cholery, Algenoliticus, and Mechnikovii, ilahang colonies on TCBS are color yellow. Because again, they ferment sucrose. But if you're non-fermenter, green colonies. Okay? Alright. So, again, don't, for, don't worry about the composition sa mga culture media. Sa stool culture na. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Okay. Next, we go now to... Um, also, sa paman, kaning growth na lang in 0% NACL. As you can see, kinsari positive. Si Vibrio Colory and si Vibrio Mimicus. A joke lang. Lahit dito siya. <laughs> si Mimiya, dito. So, si Vibrio Mimicus and si Vibrio Colory ang negative ra on 0% NACL. Why? Because again, Vibrio Colory daw is not considered to be a halophilic. So, it's not, uh, it doesn't grow well on increased salt concentration compared to the other species. Example, si Algenoliticus daw, guys, it can grow up to uh, 10%. NACL, di ba? Very high uh, sodium concentration. So, mung tubo pa ang alginoliticus ani na concentration. But for Vibrio cholery, it's not that halophilic. Okay? Compared to the other species of your um, Vibrio. So, it's very, very characteristic. Or, or characteristic dyan ni uh, no, Vibrio cholery. Di siya mo tubo on or variable ra on 6% NACL. Okay? But the rest, sa, sa 6% NACL, they grow well. Because again, they are really halophilic. Okay. Next, uh, Vibrio vulnificus, guys. Please take note, Vibrio vulnificus, aside from it causes gastroenteritis, it can also cause wound infections, okay? And its wound infections uh, can present as, or can progress to necrotizing uh, fasciitis, okay? So, kanang mag, um, mamatay na ganyan yung tissue. Necrotizing fasciitis. Now, remember, kinsa na itong uh, gram-positive coxine ako. Now, very, uh, uh, very characteristic po niya kanina disease. Strep pyogenes. May tag, wala na nag, nag-lag ato na time ha, ato na part. pag as na ko, kinsa itong gram-positive coxi na makakos po na ni na disease, na well-known po na mo cause ani disease, dapat mga one second. Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay, alright. Because again, known to be your flesh-eating bacteria. Okay. But again, um, your necrotizing fasciitis can, ah, necrotizing, your vibrio vulnificus can also cause can also cause necrotizing fasciitis. Okay. How mga kanang paghandle daw o improperly yung mga seafood, okay, or kanang mga other fish or mga basa other seafoods, uh, handling properly and then night trauma or na ay, you know, inoculation ba to your skin or what, na mga cause of wound infections. Okay. Alright. Vibrio vulnificus. Okay. Alright. Necrotizing fasciitis. Pero ang well-known yun na mga cause of necrotizing fasciitis is your strep pyogenes. Okay. Diba? Your flesh-eating Bacteria. Okay. Ayan. Next, we go now to the other um, uh, species. Uh, let's say for Aeromonas. Ag again, not too much, uh, you know, biochemical results. And again, Aeromonas. Uh, wala kayo ko naka-encounter Aeromonas on my internship. But again, if maka-encounter mo, so here are some of your species 
on sa may uh, characteristic nila. As you can see, medyo same same ra. But for Eromonas Kavi, it's uh, sucrose fermenter good, positive. So, uh, pwede siyang mag-grow on TCBS, okay. And, uh, but for Eromonas Hydrophila, it's variable. Okay. Alright. And for indole positive, silang tulo, Eromonas Kavi, Eromonas Hydrophila, and Eromonas Vero Veroniae. Yeah, Veroniae. Okay. For TSI reactions, A over A, negative ang gas, negative ang H2S, Eromonas Kavi. But A over A, H2S positive and I gas, Eromonas Hydrophila NC, Eromonas Veroniae. Okay? Alright, so again, very straightforward ang biochem results ni Eromonas uh, species. Okay. Alright, ayan. Next, we go now to another test known as the indoxyl acetate hydrolysis test. Now, its principle is again, ability to hydrolyze indoxyl acetate. So, it's like same as atong mga... KC in hydrolysis, kato gelatin hydrolysis, ayan. So, lay rin siya na substrate. It's endoxyl acetate. Your principle again, endoxyl acetate, in the presence of your bacterial hydrolysis, it converts it to endoxyl, and then plus in uh, room air or oxygen, it now becomes endoxyl white, and finally to indigo. Okay, alright. And a procedure again, uh, usually a glass lydra or um, empty petri dish, a disc, okay, this atong gamiton, and then we inoculate a heavy inoculum. Alright? Several colonies from a pure culture, 18 to 72 hour na culture daw of the test organism. And then we, in, um, we incubate aerobically at room temp for about up to 30 minutes. And then we uh, look for the uh, development of a blue to blue-green na color. Okay. So here's an example, of course. Ang left ang positive, blue to blue-green color. And negative is no color development or as you can see, na ay in color outside of blue to blue-green. So that's negative. Okay? Alright. So, that's indoxyl acetate hydrolysis test. And next, you have what we call the urea breath test. Now, for urea breath test, this is usually used for the um, detection of the urease activity in patients with H. pylori infections. This is very, it's not non-invasive. Okay? So, it's, um, yeah, it uses your breath lang. Okay? So, the principle Anna, is the patient is given carbon-13 or carbon-14 labeled urea orally. So, those are radioactive substances, guys. Now, you may be asking, Sir, radioactive, are, are these like deadly or are these harmful? Well, according to mga sources na gibasa, it's not. Uh, it's normal lang daw. Uh, it's quite normal. Uh, it's normal ra sa radiation na itong madawat every day. Like sa radiation na makuha from the sun and it's normal ra yun daw. So, matolerate na sa body and it's not harmful. Okay? So, again, carbon-13 or carbon-14. Now, in the presence of urease, it breaks down carbon-13 to carbon-14 uh, or carbon-14 to urea. And um, the urea degradation, it releases carbon dioxide, 13 or 14. And this gas is now absorbed into the bloodstream and is detected in the breath na, na exhale nato. So again, uh, the patient is given orally uh, carbon-13 or carbon-14. Usahay kay tablet siya or i-dissolve siya water. Okay? Alright? And then urease... Uh, we're expecting na imuhang tiyan kay na H. pylori, which is again a rapid urease producer. Uh, siya mo convert sa carbon-14 or carbon-13 to urea. And then ang urea, pag, pag degrade sa urea, mo release po doon carbon dioxide, 13-14, which is kanina gas is now absorbed into the bloodstream. And then muna siya madetect sa imuhang uh, exhal exhaled breath. Okay? Alright, so muna siya point, Anna. So again, it's really non-invasive. Okay? So, here's an example of a test kit. Ayan. So, kanisha guys, ang imuhang tablet. Okay? And then, muni siya ang, ang murag butangan si imong imnun. Imong ibutang ang tablet nila, and then imong imnun. Now, after murag 10 minutes ba to, or up, up to 30 minutes, um, kanisha balloon, imuna siyang tuyuhupan, or imuna siyang i-blow using this straw. And then, after imong blow, like normal na blow, uwe, normal na blow, imuna siyang i-seal, and then, after imo siya i-feed ani na machine which is known as your scintillation counter and then imong i-feed ang machine and then ihang ko untong breath okay and then iyan ang examine for the levels of this or if na ba ni siya okay all right so it's really non invasive rapid ni siya po na detection for patients with h pylori infections because another method is gastric na sample like mukuha ang sample dito and then ibutang daw siya og urea agar okay and then kung mo change ang color if mo pink then it's positive for the urease producer positive siya for h pylori infection okay all right but again if you, you, the doctor wants non invasive pwede ning urea breath test okay all right so i do hope na gets ang principle sa urea breath test okay basta again um Carbon-14, carbon-13, okay? It's radioactive, a radioactive substance, but the level of radiation or radioactivity daw, it's normal 
na na ma-receive dun sa body daily. Okay? So, it's not that harmful. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Okay. Alright. And we now go to the, you know, summary of biochemical results for Campylobacter and Helicobacter. Ayan. As you can see. Kanyang mga color red, guys, muna siya ay very um, significant yun. So, start with urease. Again, ang urease good, kinsa na positive, H. pylori. Again, strong urease producer. Rapid urease, gram-neg, bacilli, non-enteric, H. pylori good. Alright? And, unsa pa, hyperate hydrolysis, kinsa na positive. Again, karakteristik po na ni Campylobacter jejuni. Subspecies jejuni. Siya good na, as in, like hyperate hydrolysis, Campylobacter jejuni, subspecies jejuni. Asa na ito na encounter ni hyperate hydrolysis? Di ba sa mga streptococcus po? Di ba, kinsa positive ani? If I remember ako correctly, Strep Agalacti, di ba? Hyperate hydrolysis. Okay, but again, C. jejuni, subspecies jejuni, very characteristic. Uh, characteristic yun sa uh, C. jejuni, subspecies jejuni, hyperate hydrolysis. Okay, and endoxyl acetate, kinsay positive, ubay-ubay ang, ang positive. Usually, ang Campylobacter and C. Helicobacter phenylii. Phenylii. Okay, other species of Helicobacter. But again, ako rin yung kailangan ipa-remember niyo guys is H. pylori, strong urease producer, and C. jejuni or jejuni, characteristic jejuni niya is hyperate hydrolysis positive. Okay. And according to me, Hon, most common cause of gastro, bacterial and gastroenteritis worldwide daw is Campylobacter jejuni, subspecies jejuni. Okay? Please take note. Ayan, kanyang mga color red. Characteristic yun na nila. Okay? Ilahag yun na. Like, very specific. Okay? Alright. And uh, last, the part 2 of the table. Um, unsa pa man. Kani, uh, kinsay mo grow at 15 degrees Celsius, A stands for Arcobacter, guys, ha? Arcobacter. So, when you say Arcobacter, quite the same morphology daw sila with, of course, Campylobacter and Helicobacter pa rin. Okay? Alright. So, Arcobacter. And, um, Yes. Arcobacter butzleri. And what's up, man? 25 degrees Celsius, kinsara. Si C. fetus and A. butzleri. And again, 42 degrees Celsius, guys, grows well. Campylobacter jejuni, gyapon. Campylobacter coli and opsaliensis. But again, characteristic po sa C. jejuni, subspecies jejuni, grow at 42 degrees Celsius. Please take note, guys. It grows well at 42 degrees Celsius. Okay. Ayan. Alright, and kani pong susceptibility to nalidisic acid. So, kinsa may susceptible. As you can see, medyo um, opposite sila ang result. Kung susceptible ka, resistant ka sa usa. Pero na uban na, susceptible, susceptible. Oh, yeah, susceptible, susceptible. But for C. jejuni, it's susceptible to nalidisic acid, but it's resistant to um, cephalothin. How do I remember? Na siya jejuni, letter I, uh, N, I. So, na po N, yeah, N, nalidisic. So, dito siya susceptible. I don't know if that's helpful. Pero, yeah. <laughs> so, susceptible siya to nalidisic acid. Um, and then, for H. pylori, bali. Siya na po ng resistance sa nalidisic acid. Susceptible siya to cephalothin. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's the end na of our, um, <clears throat> the first part of our biochemical, te eh, biochemical testing part 3, which is, again, the biochemical tests for your non-enterics, non-enteric gastrointestinal pathogens. Now, again, um, you know, it's quite short lang. Dira kay dagang tests. Um, dag mayro to mga bagong tests no but again may, maybe TMI ra gyapon but again just try to calm down kalma lang kaya yan try to again internalize repeat repeat ra gyud sige and then try to um, yeah hinay hinay ra uh, at your own pace to learn okay so again if you have any questions uh, just chat in our group chat or PM me again that's all for biochemical testing for your non enterics gastrointestinal pathogens I'll now see you on our next lecture, guys. Okay, so have a great day, guys, and keep safe.